Um, as as a strict advocate for post left post anarchistic uh, methods of organizationality, um, I'm not explicitly for any economic alignment. I see syndicalism as a necessary stopgap uh, gap measure to head in the direction that we need to head as a transitory phase. But ultimately, uh, my turn of phrase that I like to use is where I would like to go. We don't actually have a train directly to there, so we're going to have to change trains at multiple train stations to arrive at the destination that I wish to arrive at. And as a torchbearer of anarchism, I also recognize that that will not occur in my lifetime. So there's no in, there's no purpose behind me advocating for one specific economic form, because ultimately, if, if a group of people were to engage in the organizational methodologies that I advocate for, there's no predictive manner in which I could, uh, there's no prescriptive manner in which I could approach an economic policy. Ultimately speaking, the organizational methods, since I am a strict anarchist, ultimately mean that the group of people would have to arrive at, cons at a consensus of how they, uh, how they are going to organize themselves as far as that goes me personally i would i would like to see um fully automated gay uh gay space anarchism that's my territory um i think uh, f fully automated space uh, luxury gay space anarchism i'm not uh, any of those prim primitivist type i think that lux what we consider luxuries are necessities to everyday life and that i think we should make life as good as possible for every single uh single individual and that we should um treat everybody with equality and equity within that system but that's neither here nor there as i said ultimately speaking um, we have bigger issues to, to deal with at present. Thus, I am an advocate for what around these parts we refer to as making a sandwich. Um, it is our shorthand turn of phrase for community, uh, community based acti uh, activism. It is there is a there is a homeless person probably down the street from you right now who is hungry. Right, we could sit here and talk about these grand machinations and these macroeconomic systems that uh, need revising, need throwing out, need redoing entirely, however you wish to approach that thematically for yourself. But ultimately speaking, you are, a, you are one person and the organizational structure is not there for us to engage in that, but you can make a difference in your community and thus micro-revolutionary actions such as feeding people in your localized community is greater than trying to engage in the grand communist revolution. So I hope nematode that was as concise and in totality of an answer as you wish to receive from me. Uh, mage, I don't, that's the wrong question. Mage, I really want to talk to you. Are you okay with getting on air? I, I think there's a convert, even if you aren't, we are going to talk eventually. Um, okay. So here's, here's the answer to that. Okay. Um, I, you go into voice chat mage and I will pull you into on air. Hear that. <clears throat> uh, there, the mage is already there, Gemma. Don't worry about it. All right. Can you count to three for me just so I can get your audio leveled? One, two, three. Cool. Grazie. Um, for the purposes of, hi, my name's Kai. Um, shall I just re continue to refer to you as mage? Um, I guess for, I guess, uh, for now, yeah. Okay, cool. I have, that, a, I have a, a very unique name. That's, that's fine. I'm perfectly happy to tell, call people whatever the fuck they want me to call them. Um, just, my name is Kai. Um, so... My answer to your question is my answer to every communist who's ever did the lull, anarchism fails everywhere sort of thing. Um, anarchism exists, continues to exist, and is thriving on a global scale. Mm -hmm. It's just that people don't understand how anarchism works. 
And so ultimately speaking, they're looking for a statist solution within an anarchistic framework. Mm. And so anarchism is feeding people in 120 odd countries right now due to food, not bombs alone. Right. Yeah. So anarchism is working at a microcosmic level and a macrocosmic scale every moment of every day that we continue to exist. It's a living, breathing, uh, dynamic set of a network of, uh, of, of ideas, as Emma put it. Um, and ultimately, that will continue to exist no matter what. Now, when I say it won't be achieved in my lifetime, what I'm talking about is my end state goals. Those are not happening in my lifetime. We're not going to see the fall of the nation state and the end of capitalism as it has come to be in my lifetime. That's not happening. So, I guess the reason, that, the reason that I think otherwise is because typically empires last, you know, like 100-ish years. And... Um, you know, the empire everybody's looking at is obviously the United States. It's, it's definitely on the downfall. You know, Texas is looking to turn into a new country. Except, you know, except uh, even if we hit, even if the balkanization of the United States occurs, which I are, I, we continually argue that it has already occurred, that this is the problem with leftists. Okay. Is that generally speaking, they have this conceptualization of a meta narrative of revolution in their mind as a singular, uh, singular temporal moment, rather than what it mm. actually is, is a protracted series of processes that occur over hundreds of years. And so ultimately, this time frame that people are applying to this, like, because this is not the first time I've heard this theorem, right? is ultimately this time frame that people are applying to the like downfall of the imperial core that is the United States. One, I don't think that's happening, but even outside of demographical analysis, financial analysis and various you know Marxian analysis of capitalist uh, capitalist uh, capitalism turning inwardly on itself and the degra uh, degradation that it occurs through its uh, exploitative processes. All of that aside, even if that prescriptive uh, theorem is applied and is true, the process is not a thing that happens in the moment. The fall of the Roman Empire did not happen in that time frame. It happened over many hundreds of years. And so that thing that you're looking for is not a single temporal signpost, but will continue to degrade over your lifetime. But there will be no singular moment that you're going to be like, that was it, because there will be remnants holding oh, yeah. on. Google will still, Alphabet will still exist. Lockheed Martin will still exist. General Dynamics will still exist. They'll go do business elsewhere. If there's a new imperial, imperial core, the capitalist modality will just shift. In, mm. India rises up. Yeah. India is a developing nation. Maybe India's got the, the population to be exploited. They got uh, over a billion people. That's plenty of exploitation that, that capitalism can latch on to. So the imperial core shifts to maybe a subcontinent. There you go. India is waving some fun flags, uh, and they have been for the past couple of years with the sickle and hammer on them. Well, I don't know that India might be the... Um, but I, I, I understand what you're saying, you know, like the Imperial core will, will go wherever right. that happened for it. That happened here too. Look at the 1880s to the 1920s labor movements in America. Any, any student of the labor movement history in, in North America will absolutely find the exact same processes. It's like, holy shit, man. Like, how do you think we ended up with the five day work week? It used to be a lot more than that. Mm -hmm. How do you think we ended up with the eight hour work day? Right? Like anarchists and oh, yeah, blood. Like, blood. So Every all, time all blood, that happened, course. all that happened here. Those flags were flown here. Those, those protracted mm -hmm. uh, wars, uh, those protracted battles were fought across that war here, just as you will see there. But I don't want to sound doomer when I say this, but this is a very real oh, lesson that all leftists need to come to terms with. Neoliberal hypercapitalism won. It won a decisive victory on a global scale. Now, my, my thinking, though, I, like the reason that I hesitate to agree with that thinking, is because I, as, as a person in the black community, I closely follow Reaganomics. So I'm deeply aware of ne like neoliberalism like nobody fucking likes it like i if i even mention 
like tangential ideas related to neoliberalism. People lose their fucking minds because they're just so they just hate it. Do those people? The only people who are invested are those who are like on the fringes of fascism. Mm. Mm. Do those people you speak to happen to own controlling stock in, say, a military industrial complex contractor? Um, no. I guess probably not. Okay. Uh, I was do those, thinking do about the, the do those people the, you the speak to or whatever. Well, do those spe- those people you speak to have control over the majority of the farmland in this country? Um. Oh, they do not. Okay, so my point is that those people you're speaking to that don't like neoliberal hypercapitalism ultimately aren't the people in power because the people in power do. And that's Mm, the point is the people in power, the people who are in control are all in on this. So you can say as much as you want about the various peasantry, the proletariats, the average person, the common man. You can use whatever terminology you want that makes your brain go yay. But at the end of the day, the ones who are making the money, the ones who control the, uh, the, uh, the halls of power, the political class and the capitalist class who are controlled and aligned as a single union within a global scheme, right, are firmly in many of them are true blue believers because let's face it it did a lot of good for them and Mm -hmm. ultimately ultimately are advocates and operators for that system so that's how it always worked you can any any feudalism peasantry to pick your fucking system Mm. that has always been the issue the issue i argue that never with minor exceptions right we're going to just be super pedantic about this with minor exceptions right the Uh, system has always been one of an oligarchy name me a governmental system throughout history that was of note and had significant power within a region that was not controlled by the rich and powerful that's obviously impossible so the problem has always been oligarchy right it's an organizational structural issue it's how we Mm -hmm. organize the system because if you allow for this consolidation of power bases right if that's Mm -hmm. a feature in your system then it will occur because of human nature that's just how that's going to happen And I can look Mm. at any system. And this is why communists and capitalists alike get shit on on this channel because I am a street-educated anarchist who then spent a couple of decades learning theory and have now a bunch of decades in me understanding this. I was basically born into anarchism (laughs) in a very real way. And... The same problem exists within both of these systems. They manifest in slightly different ways sometimes. But ultimately, it is about the the Foucaultian power dynamics, really, at the end of the day. It's about imbalanced power dynamics between human beings interacting within an organizational system of some sort. Do you have the same say as I? Well... (sighs) You know, did did that farmer Mm -hmm. in in Stalinistic Russia have the same say as Stalin? You better goddamn believe he didn't. Right. Stalin was more important. The party leader was more important. Take Stalin out of it. Like the fucking the vanguard is more important. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. By definition, these people have placed themselves above the rest of the people, which creates an, a, a possibility and a, a possibility for and an endorsement to abuse of power. 
The same thing happens within the clergy. The same thing happens within, within, within. We could point to a business and you have the blizzard execs fucking sexually harassing people to death. You could point to the Catholic yeah. Church. You could point to Stalinistic Russia. You can point to capitalist America. The whole thing is the same problem over and over and over because these systems of power, these systems of organization do not take into account fundamental human behavior or rather they take it into account in a perverted manner in which they then utilize and leverage those Machiavellian, and I use this in the, the, the modern sense of Machiavellian, not the manner in which Machiavelli himself actually used it, but the modern Machiavellian methods that people engage in, hence the Reagan-era Hollywood-esque greed is good. Right, You see that mm. sort of encouragement of that bad behavior. In China, you see the people's billionaires and the people's multinational corporations, right? And it's like, okay, yeah, that sounds like communism to me, right? Um, sure. Um, okay. Right? Mm. And the people's secret police. The people's gulag. Right? It's like, no. No, that's the same thing. It's the same thing on both sides of the aisle. And so that's why I, one, love being an anarchist is because I get to be an equal opportunity offender and just sit here and go, you're all fucking nuts. Stop forcing your will on other people using violent means. Coercion is violence, right? And ultimately, at the end of the day, that's how we end up where we are over and over and over at this point. Meanwhile... The anarchists are just out there in the street, feeding people, healing people, educating people, setting up community gardens, setting, setting up, you know, running street medic programs, running, uh, running community libraries, uh, just organizing and getting shit done. And the communists, I, I have to, I, I pick on them because they are the counterbalance to the capitalists and the capitalists have already won. They're barely worth talking about. Because we all know, ob observationally, it's like we can we live in it, man. It, we're saturated by it. We, if you don't know at this point, like you said, everybody you talk to, it's basically like, yeah, fuck this, right? It's not, yeah. it's not pleasant. Yeah. But the the counterbalance to that is then this group that organizationally um, speaking advocates for a system of centralized authoritarianism, which is exactly the problem with what we have now. Mm -hmm. I fully agree. Prescriptive from the Marx level. It is baked in, which, by the way, uh, Tale of Twin Rabbit on YouTube, if you're not familiar with Rabbit, lo uh, longtime friends with Rabbit. Uh, he's an indigenous uh, anthropologist uh, and uh, has archaeological doing mass grave uh, uh, research. Um, and he has a great piece on stolen anarchy, on how uh, Marx and Engels basically jacked their shit. Um and what was their uh, name? Tale of Twin Rabbit. Perfect. I'm just putting that in now. Um, yeah, Stolen Anarchy is the piece. Um, and yeah, he's a he's a PhD professor, um, and indigenous himself. And yeah, it's a it's an interesting little historical piece about like, hey, uh, just FYI, these uh, white European dudes didn't come up with basically any of this. Um, but like, um. So you know, eh, eh. Yeah. good. Well, I, oh, like, so chat. from my perspective, um, I, oh, what are you sending me something in the chat? A uh, link in chat. Uh, two people, Wordy, okay, Wordy and chat hooked, hooked you up with the link. Either um, way. Oh, okay, sweet. Um, so from my perspective, you know, I believe in things like propaganda by the deed. Um, you know, like, uh, I, and I think that we don't need, don't need to wait a long time. We just need, you know, uh, revolutionary action. Um, and that like, you know, if you, uh, well, like for example, in my, in my, in my small little town, I, I steal, steal a lot of groceries. And I'm not quiet or, or shy about it either. Like I talk to the employees and it's to the point where, like, because groceries are, are absolutely fucking ridiculous. Um, I think that, like, actions like that, like, 
I've definitely seen more people stealing as a result of me being so casual about it. Okay, so um, um, and I just given that we're a public mm -hmm. platform, is it going to really quickly mention that I do not advocate for uh, advocate for and encourage anybody to break the uh, break the laws or regulations of their locality? Um, well, I just mean in Minecraft. That's fine. Course. That's fine. I'm just literally cover uh, CYAing with Twitch. That is just fucking. Yeah. It's one of those things we have to do, and we understand. Um, Okay, so we we all sort of butt puckered the instant you said pr propaganda of the deed, um, because most of us Why are hi historians of anarchism around here, and that is a very specific era of anarchism. And yeah, yeah the French Revolution. Yeah. Well, outside of that, it it has very little to do with the well, it has somewhat to do with the French, but the the Italians, the Spaniards. Um, the, the Chileans, the Argentinians, um, the, uh, even the, the archipelago, uh, the, what comes to be known as the Philippines, um, get very involved in the era of the propaganda of the deed. And it includes a lot of assassinations uh, and a lot of bombings yeah. and a lot of raids on military bases. And so well, – Like, for example – like I, I, I fuck with heavy the IRA. I heavily fuck with the IRA. You know, I will not condemn uh, oppressed people for rebelling, no matter how they go about doing so. The problem is, though, that organizationally speaking, speaking, the IRA ultimately becomes their own worst enemy. And I'm not even talking about the engagement with the British because fuck that. But the abuses that the IRA did against their own people. The people that they were supposedly advocating and uh, and fighting for, and you start to see people who were just trying to uh, who were c oppressed by the uh, the economic systems they're in, and were trying to d get by and engaged in criminal activity, and you have things like the crucifixions that occurred at the hands of the IRA of people in their own community and that sort of thing, right? Because they are an organization that does believe in um, enforcement by force. And mm -hmm. so if you go down that road, and again, not a pacifist, but if you go down that road and you do not set up yourself organizationally correctly, then what you will ultimately arrive at is, again, abuses of power. And when you are an organization, with a, a militant well, organization, chances are those of abuses mm. of power are going to be worse than not feeding a guy. I, like for me, the difference is, you know, we either go with, you know, uh, radical direct action, um, you know, very uh, sporadic, or we go with the fucking Jacobins Club, you know, like if we organize, you know, we, we have, there's threats that, that way too. The, um, the system so it's, is, it's organ about the system is set up for that though. The system understands violence. That's, that's how everybody got outdone by it. You're not going to outfight the Imperial core. It just isn't. Like it didn't it didn't work for the IRA. It didn't work for the you, Hold on, hold on, hold on. It def like it definitely gained some some ground for the IRA. Is there one Ireland you know, like or not? The... No, there's not because the Protestants are fucking Well, well then it didn't it, fucking yeah. work, but... did it? That was the whole goal was to reunify Ireland. Yeah, um, <laughs> I agree. That was the point. Agree, the, the point Protest was Protest there is a British you know, Protestant stronghold to... in our nation and we want it gone. And that exact st stronghold exists today. Mm. It failed. Just like the, just like so much of it failed because ultimately the state has a monopoly on violence. And if you engage in that direct violent conflict, which by the way, theft of capital is considered violence in a capitalist system for those that follow these, it's fucking insane, but it's how it operates. Well it's just so easy it's just so easy to show people you know wage theft it's so easy to say hey you're making your company five hundred dollars an hour and getting 10 of that does that make sense to you and people like it's not these concepts aren't as comp like i understand these concepts are complex they can be they can be simplified easily and without losing any of the like important depth i feel well but that but i think that, that has to that of... actually has to happen are you familiar with a guy by the name of michel luc bellemare 
I'm not. Okay. Um, Bella Mayer, uh, structural, uh, structural, uh, anarchism, either way. Um, here's, here's the, the takeaway. It's very pedantic, academically dense texts is what he's really notorious for. But, uh, as a student okay, of okay. Bella Mayer's, I'll, I'll give you the highlights because I think they might be useful for you. He argues that sure. ultimately revolutionary acts cannot be taught within our society due to the disenfranchised, misinformed, disinformed, purposefully uh, undereducated populace within these, uh, within these areas. What you have to start with is micro-revolutionary acts. And he, he specifically talks about how these sort of places like the workplace, like the classroom, like the home, like the local community, where you can engage in these small, low-risk, micro-revolutionary acts and change the mindset of those that you are organizing and engaging in activism with and teach a next generation that you can subvert these uh, these uh, neo-fascist power structures by doing simple acts such as X, Y, or Z. That then primes the pump, as it were, for the next generational, and I don't even mean that as people, just the next generational uh, uh, act that you're going to engage in. You start with that sort of, hey, you know you can like tell your professor no when he does that, right? The rules say that he can't do that, and you can just say no. Oh shit. The next thing may be forming a student, you know, some sort of student body, or it may be forming mm -hmm. a community garden and the community garden becomes a, you know, a, then sprouts off and starts feeding all of the, the, the homeless people in the area. And now you're like, well, we need to put them in houses. So let's start that. I'm hearing start incrementalism that. and start that. Like, well, but I, I you're with, not going I agree with to all these things. Like, and what, I practice, what's, what's the solution practice is kind of, you have it just to sounds, do that. It, Sounds and feels like incrementalism. You have to, yes, because there's no other fucking way. Bro, are you like, are you going to tell you what? I'll ship you an AR-15 right now. Start the revolution. I mean, I how deluded can I, you be? You can't be an insurgent in America. Well, you know, thank fuck I'm in Canada, but you I can't be an insurgent there. I, you're just America light. You fucking. I know, I know. You can't but be like, an insurgent. They will SWAT team you. you. And if they can't you SWAT team speaking? you, they'll National Guard or whatever your equivalent is. They'll bring in the feds. They have an entire Five Eyes spying apparatus to tap every single intelligence, mm. tap uh, put, to focus every single intelligence agency in the world at your organization. They will infiltrate. They will assassinate. Right? Like, they will kill you in your sleep, in your bed. They have done it. We have the records. <laughs> right? Like, 100%. Like... So you know, as as somebody as somebody from the black community, you know, like I I know the I know the Fred Hampton story. Like it's you're it's what you're just talking about Fred Hampton from my perspective. I am talking like, about Fred Hampton. Like I'm talking about the Black like, Panthers. The same, I'm talking about Fred Hampton. Of course, of course. Like yes, this, I know. You know, they went into they 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 sprayed them down just like you described. But like at the same time, you also described the what I would deem radical changes that were you know sex, successfully implemented. And I just what are those changes? To you know, insight. Yeah. What are those changes? Um, I guess a lot of changes, like uh, the way the uh, a lot of. I don't know the specifics, but I know that. I, well, I should know the specifics because I actually looked into this. But a lot of the stuff that we, like, a lot of the medical community stuff. I mean, there's obviously still very racist bias in the medical community. But there's a lot better. This is in the medical community specifically because of Black Panthers, um, school lunches. Um, well, I guess the breakfast program is what it actually is. Um, so I'll take. I will like take. Lot, I will take one black good organizations positive. like the NAACP have significantly more power um, and can speak. Like, I mean, I'm not saying that we, you know, we. So you know, overthrew capitalism. No, I, I, and I understand that. But what you're arguing for is incrementalism. Oh, okay, okay. So, well, I guess to be 100% honest with you, I think the primary reason that the Black Panthers were unable to get the kind of radical action that I'm talking about, uh, excuse me for being uh, maybe a bit uh, undescending to the Black Panthers, uh, it might sound like, 
um, but it's because of the organizational structure. You know, like even their own, like especially the women in the movement re repeatedly talked about how, you know, if you are organizing power in a hierarchical structure, um, like like we're discussing, uh, then the Black Panthers were hierarchical. We're going to get hierarchical results, and if the goal of the movement is to abolish hierarchies, at you know, or unjustified hierarchies, if you want to be pedantic, that wasn't their goal, though. No, no, but so the the issue is is that you're right. You know, the the Black Panthers' goal wasn't to abolish un, uh, unjust unjustified hierarchies. If you listen to the women of the movement, who unfortunately were shoved to the back because of misogyny um, war, the women said that that should have been the goal. And I think that I think that with all the all the like teachings that we have from from the from the community, it could easily be implemented today. You know, like we just need to structure our like our movements in a fashion where these results can be achieved. You know, you can't abolish the hierarchy using a hierarchy. You know, the tools of the master will not. Yeah, like hundred percent agree. Hundred percent agree. Now, how do you propose we build that structure? I mean, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even give myself any credit. I'm, I'm honestly just parroting black women when I say these things. Okay. So but like, again, it's yeah. each one teach one, right? That's the territory we're in, right? Is you can't build an organizational structure. Be, uh, okay. So what is, what is a network, right? It's a series of interconnected nodes. Those nodes are mm -hmm. individual units that are then given yep, yep. form into this higher level, right? We're in cybernetics 101 territory now. So, okay, okay, I'm sure. So, those individuals are the microcosmic elements of a macrocosmic system. So, ultimately, there is no way to go about revolutionary change in this meta narrative that people uh, that leftists have without some form of incrementalism. Because you're going to have to break that network into its constituent nodal components, single human beings, and you are going to have to mm -hmm. meet those human beings at the place and level and way they are, and you're going to have to meet their material needs as well as inform them of the benefits and the methods that you are going to go about engaging in this operation from. And that takes feeding them, clothing them, housing them, educating them. You're going to have to engage in what you derisively called incrementalism at any, at every stage of this process, because there's no way you can just throw a net over a hundred thousand people, round them up and say, this is how we're doing it and call yourself an anarchist. You're a hundred percent right. So like, I, I think um, maybe it might be a good idea to define incrementalism at this point because I think I'm understanding your perspective on what you're like. So obviously, you know, people need or the masses, however we want to phrase it, need to be educated um, in order to like, you know, engage in a meaningful way in radical activism. Uh, and that, you know, that's step one. And so we are making incremental progress that way. Like from my perspective, you know, um, if people are aware uh, that the conditions are, you know, uh, very disfavorable, um, and it, we just show them how to. Sorry for being so long-winded. We we, sh we show them how to, how they can uh, re like rebel against those conditions in a meaningful way. Um, I think I think it should be sporadic. Uh, because, like, you know, the revolution won't happen unless it happens the way I want it is ultimately, you know, um, thing we're trying to avoid. And so if, you know, um, what do you call them? Infinity groups. If if one infinity group decides, you know, find themselves the trees is great, and they go and do that, and the other group decides that, you know, fucking RBC needs to be on fire tomorrow, and they go do that, I think we need a diversity of tactics, you know. Martin Luther King was only able to make so much progress 
because Malcolm X was saying you better you better give him the progress, otherwise we're going to make sure he get we're we're going to we're going to hurt you for it. Um, early and I think early that, Malcolm, not post Mecca Malcolm, but your point stands, and I've made that exact point a dozen times. So I just always want to clarify: post Mecca Malcolm's a different different dude entirely. Yeah, that's very true. <laughs> yeah, the the yeah. Islam really fucked him, but. Relig um, religion does cameras. does strange things um it's, it's so uh yes um you know we there's a reason we have no gods no masters um but I'm i just think i think we need to be we need to be much more um sporadic isn't the right word we need to be much more spread out like like having a central focus you're is, you, you what you're arguing what you're arguing for is distributed network topology that's that's literally what you're arguing for from a cybernetics uh a cybernetic theorist, theorist point you're arguing for uh distributed network topologies and so ultimately what you want is a uh, a map of people that have lines connecting between all of them so if one gets yanked out of this network there's still connections to everything else it's a highly resilient mm -hmm. form of organizational structure now here's here's my uh, again we uh, we agree on this is this is the anarchist debate of old, right? We 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 basically we're like, yeah, they're all fuckheads, like you know that sort of thing. We're we're well in the in the weeds of this of this, and it's been a it's been a hot minute since I've had this kind of conversation on air, and I I am kind of enjoying it. Um, so thank you. <laughs> um, no worries. I I wrote a piece. Like, sure, I'm a baby leftist, I guess, but like I I. I'm not so baby that I don't. Well, I guess you're throwing out some pretty hefty words that I, I guess aren't in my vocabulary. But um, I hope I'm. I hope I'm keeping pace. You're, you're more than more than enough. Trust me. If I'm dealing with fucking people who are carrying water for advertising agencies, trust me, it's a breath of fresh fucking air. It's like a mountain zephyr. You need, you need to raise the bar. Um, you need to raise the fucking bar. So, but that's. I mean, that is one of the points of the channel. Um, is doing that sort of thing. Like I, I will use mm -hmm. ten dollar words, and but I'll explain them. Like it's you know, it's like but there are words to describe mm -hmm. some of these things, right? It's, there, we have words for this. Um, I wrote a piece ages ago. Distributed network technology. Um, and uh, so you might be um, familiar with the phrase poverty of philosophy just because it's it, it, it's a <laughs> technically a Marxian reference, but I just stole the phrase. Um, it's no reference to Marx. But I, I essentially put together this thing, what I called the three tent poles of oppression, American, but in parentheses, just because the imperial core, you know, is what it is. Um, hmm. <laughs> not a good enough reason to use the word Zephyr, you pretentious fuck. Fuck you, Marcus. You're more pretentious than me. Um, <laughs> you speak Latin, Marcus. Calm down. <laughs> Um, it, I wrote this piece called th the ten, three temples of America uh, of oppression and it essentially breaks them down into the poverty philosophy, the financial hamster wheel and the uh, fear of the police state. And it's sort of this, this exercise that, okay, so we have this oppressive society, right? We all we're on board, right? It's fucked. We're fucked. We're getting fucked. Dick's coming from everywhere and nobody's getting any lube, right? All right, fine. So where does it start? It starts at this position of the poverty of philosophy, right? Um, starting from before child, before birth, but starting from birth, you are inundated by this purposeful dissemination of misinformation and miseducation and dissuasion of dangerous ideals, right? This, this happens your entire life, right? So you have these sort of I, I i'm reticent to invoke him but you have this like sort of chomsky-esque manufacturing consent globalistic forces pressing down on your perception of the world your entire life now your suffering definitely is a, a, a tool that can be utilized by an activist like us right an organizer can mm -hmm. be like hey you know but you're going to have to overcome a whole bunch of these uh, viruses that have been installed. Now, totally doable. I've done it. 
it takes a lot of work. It has to be customized and tailored and you got to work with people and it takes time and that sort of thing. But here's the point of the piece is even if you overcome that poverty philosophy, which by the way, takes a long time, it's not, it's not an overnight process, right? Even if you are, you know, it's like, it, it takes a while to overcome some of those hangups, some of those inbuilt biases, some of that subconscious mm-hmm. stuff that's been laid in by a system that's intentionally installing that shit into your operating system from day one, right? Even if you start to overcome this process, people are slowed down immediately by that financial hamster wheel, right? They are hamstrung by a capitalist modality of operation that uh, that valuates every single thing in existence, including breath and time, right? There is a dollar sign applied to everything. And if mm. you are not able to pay for X, Y, or Z, this society will let you die of a preventable infection yep. under a bridge, like get fucked, yep. right? So you have that financial pressure that's constantly applying that downward force on every single individual you're attempting to radicalize and you're attempting to uh, – radicalizing them is pretty easy. It's the, uh, it's the motivation into action portion of it that really is the, the stymie. Okay, I'll just I – I only need to say two words to like kind of you know, interrupt the flow. I, I'll just say material conditions. It is you ultimately, and under a capitalist modality, it takes cooperative organizational structures already existing to attempt to alleviate those material needs. So you've already had to have bootstrapped some degree of organizing onto the next level of organizing you're attempting to do. But here's the final nail in the coffin for every activist and organizer is the fear of the police state. And it's not just a fear. Right. It is the existence of the police state because I was there for Occupy. I was there for George Floyd and BLM. Right. I've seen this first fucking hand. We've got somebody in chat right there right now who who may look a lot like somebody who may have drop kicked a Fed. Right. Similarities. Who knows? (laughs) Right. It it, it, so, so fucking who knows? People look the same. I don't know. Um, but when you engage in these modalities, when you engage in something that is possibly useful, that is possibly transformative, you, you gain the attention of the system of the state. Oh, hundred percent. Of course. And now of course, yeah. you are seen as a disruptive force. Right. And that that warrants all sorts of elevated measures. And that's where you start to see for sure. But the- that's that's why that's why, like you pointed out, we use these distributed networks because they, no matter like no matter which like which group they target, they'll never target the actual like like the actual uh organization or whatever. You, you, and you can't the, kill you can't kill an it, idea. Yes. Well, the other the other threat though is that when you have when you have this wide, you know, um, I guess uh, amorphous group, there is a strong possibility that they target somebody not even affiliated with the group. Which when they do that, when they do that, you're happy. I mean, mm. you're not happy, but you no. know. Uh, that that uh, because we don't control the media, and that ultimately will become uh, will be an optics problem. Um, they will spin. That's one hundred percent correct. You, it is an optic problem. They will spin that like that. Um, but we don't. We don't need to. Con- we don't need to control Fox News in order to like. If we were. If we were just listening to mainstream media, Palestine would be bulldozed by now. Like it'd be fucking gone. Just to be honest. Um, I mean, and unfortunately, functionally, it has been. Well, I mean. I, I still have hope for the you know over a million people still living there. They're they're, get, they're getting the I indigenous mean, reservation treatment. That's this is a colonial settler project. The writing's been on the wall for ages. I don't have much hope in that regard, um, based on the satellite photography Gosh. that 
we've seen. Of you're the just d- a doomer. No, I'm gonna say it. no, I wasn't I'm, gonna say I'm, it before, I'm, but I'm you're a, a doomer. I'm a realist who's been at this for three decades. Yikes! That's such common doomer phrasing. Like doomers always say they're realists. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. You know, I I agree that we can't just look at everything sunshine and rainbows, and next week we'll have fucking solar punk. Like, you know, I think that optimism is healthy. I think it's healthy to, to be optimistic about, you know, about our conditions and about the future of our conditions. I'm optimistic about the future, not the present. We're not there yet. That's why I call myself a torchbearer for these ideas. Humanity as a group isn't there yet. We just aren't. These are wild-eyed dreams at this point. This is why Peter Marshall referred to him as demanding the impossible. It's possible, and we do it all the time. But you need a critical mass to be reached. And until that critical mass is reached, then it will be business as usual. And business as usual right now for a Palestinian on the ground is not great. Mm. Of course, of course. It's looking Uh. very similar to what it looked like for mm. the indigenous population of North America when the European colonial settlers showed up here. Like, they've yeah, got them cornered, correct. backs against a wall, rounded, surrounded, and they are leveling it. Block yeah. by block. And right Can now, I, all that's it. happening... Realistically, you can point to like Irish parliamentary pushback and you can point to student protests and divestments here and there. But again, Those point to South Africa apartheid and say they, they had the similar, similar situation and the point there. Speak to a South African about the, the facts on the ground right now. Much of the governmental corruption that existed under the apartheid regime just transferred positionality. Out, it, once the okay, but apartheid like, came down, an organization like the EFF would not have existed under the apartheid South Africa. It's you know decently you know decently large now. I mean, sure, but again, the damage like, has been the, done, and so like I mean. It's being reversed. I, I agree that it's incremental, like you were talking about earlier. But and this is this is the point. There's no grand macro stratagem you can engage in. There's no one act. It's single people that, that's doing true, yeah. single things mm-hmm. in single moments. Mm-hmm. That's how change happens. And this militant insurgent expression is counterproductive especially now look if we were if this was 1880 are you kidding me look i'm not saying i'd advocate for anything here but if this were 1880 i'd be having an entirely (laughs) different conversation with you but i'm somebody who came up age Mm. four mainframe terminal Right, my mom's got me from a mainframe terminal. Terminal. That same age, I'm singing Arlo and Woody Guthrie songs. I grew up in Vermont, surrounded by anarchists. Right, I'm in the punk rock and mm. rave scene at 14, while doing custom okay. programming. I'm an Occupy organizer. I'm on the air streaming with people fucking literally burning cars in Minneapolis during the George Floyd fucking protests. Right, my credentials are in order for this stuff. But the reality of the situation is, it's 2024 not 1880 and i've seen repeated attempts in my lifetime up close and personal of a variety of tactics and i'll tell you right now the ones that are the most confrontational the most direct with the system tend to fail the worst ways and by the worst ways i us- i mean usually people are going to bleed and die um, you're going to have a Kent State Jackson State sort of situation on your hands. You're cool. gonna you're gonna have that sort of moment where it's like, oh yeah, somebody's getting shot today. Like w- in Las mm. Vegas, where I live now, 
Vegas is an entirely different scene. People, leftist organizers, don't even understand Las Vegas. You have to live here for a couple of decades before you can wrap your head around this place. Dude, the George Floyd protests here, small, small. They went, de- they went up onto the strip. That was their first mistake. The casinos just phoned Metro and were like, there's protesters on the strip. Fucking multiple SWAT units just immediately tank them oh, wow. off, off of the fucking road, just into one of the side streets off the strip. Then they go near the Justice Center, and one of them gets just domed between the eyes by a cop. Just, just shot. Straight oh. up. Just ping. That was basically the end of the protests. Right? Like, okay, help. you have mm. to understand the the play field right you have to understand your enemy you have to understand and Mm -hmm. while hey stealing from a corporate run grocery store a hundred percent like you know that works but if someone across the street from me said hey let's go steal some stuff from target across the road do they have a forensics lab that is used by quantico the fbi sends shit to targets forensics lab okay that's how high end that shit is right you're you're Mm. misunderstanding your target and your risk benefit analyses are off and so that's why we need to engage in these sort of down ticket communally driven actions because the micro makes the macro the tone of the system as a whole is made by these people and so you can take advantage of these sorts of senses of alienation within people that everyone has been experiencing more and more and that's a useful organizing tool and you start to you approach people and you're like hey you mean you remember when covid hit like shit got weird man we got to take care of each other couldn't we like you know you and i do like some food prep or something we could put some food down every week next thing you know you got the apartment like a few apartments down the hallway or the cul-de-sac or your street involved Mm -hmm. next thing you're talking about you're like guys why are we buying these fucking groceries at this cost do we have like a csa or can we do some like i don't know some hydroponics for ourselves or something let's let's see if we can't supplement this right next thing you know you got a fucking community garden going Right. And you're starting to take, you're starting to take care of your neighbors and your neighbors are taking care of you. And now you're in it together. You have a sense of coordinated investment, right? Like that dude thrives. I thrive, right? His bad harvest is my bad harvest. Now you're starting to think about the world differently. Right, You're seeing the world through different eyes. You're starting to encourage their circles of compassion or their circles of empathy to grow. Right. And that because that's what capitalism does. So if, uh, Corsini Encyclo- Encyclopedia of Psychology, volume two, page 811. Right. Cir- uh, uh, meta this were several meta analyses on uh, circles of empathy or empathetic response to the world around you uh, lie. And it's a great starting position for those. But ultimately, there's this sort of theorem within psych- certain realms of psychology that empathy works in this sort of like. Um, geometric fashion that you experience it to a depth that is sort of you you will you're coded to a certain degree environmental and genetic you experience it a, a, a strength of it the way you experience it but the distance at which you experience that response is highly coded by your societal interactions And so hyper-individualistic societies such as North American, American, Western cultures restrict that circle of empathy down, whereas communalistic uh, East Asian and sort of islander cultures um, and indigenous cultures as well encourage a a wider circle of empathy. That's why you see like the Navajo Nation, uh, I think it was the Navajos, sending a few, you know, just what they could over to the Irish during the troubles, right, Uh, during uh, during the famine. Right. And there's sort of mm. these wider circles of empathy that generally speaking are theorized at the individual, the uh, at the sort of um, the familial level, those immediately around you, your friends and family. Then you have the communal level, sort of your general area like, oh, shit, that happened in my town, my state. Then you have the sort of regional and the global. Right. And it's our job as organizers and activists to try and buy Gemma take care um to try and 
engage in these micro revolutionary actions to expand that circle of empathy so that the response mechanism that people have to others suffering is to internalize it as their own and things like prioritizing food really works well at that like so this is like i mean you know i'm not talking to an idiot like this has been going on for a long fucking time like mm -hmm. you know longer than i've been alive probably longer than you've been alive oh well, pfft, and, are you kidding me this is hundreds thousands fucking anarchism as an idea finds its origins in the roots of humanity like and like we're still doing this like mm -hmm. when do we move on to stage two this is this is the toughest lesson that every activist organizer and politically minded person has to take on board one day there is no stage two <laughs> spaghetti spaghetti old man stage two what do you mean by it? like like stage two is the actual revolution like stage two you know stage one class consciousness stage two revolution stage three anarchism right that's the goal no it, it, look it, you're talking about humans humans i bet i could put this in a turn of phrase that you'll understand pretty quickly Humans are not binary creatures. Mm -mm. We exist on a spectrum. Everything okay, okay. is yeah. done in yeah. degrees that are immeasurable. Who you are today is not who you are tomorrow. Who you are now is not who you were before you joined this, this call. Who I am now is not who I was when I joined this call. Right? Human beings don't operate the way that many organizers want them to. And you see amongst the MLs, yeah, and it's... Right what? I'm just... Um, Spaghetti pointed out that anarchism isn't, isn't a goal, like I was trying... Like I was yeah. painting it as. It's just, it's it, just it, like it, there is, thought, like there is no methodology. There's no project of projects. That's the anarchist way of putting that there's, you know, uh, no recipes for the cook shops of tomorrow you may be familiar with from the Marxian side, which then he wrote recipes mm. for the cook shops of tomorrow, which great job guy. Um, <laughs> but like there is no project of projects. Anarchism is a, a tool belt full of tools that it's my job to ensure that I can make this tool belt. I can replicate this tool belt and that I can give to those who are willing to take it that see the value in this tool belt and the tools that are contained within it. And then I have to trust, which is real difficult for humans, especially humans who have been abused, which we all have. Yeah, but, but like, you know, if, it, if we're going to be collective, then we have to work collectively. And that requires trust. Obviously requires trust, like you're saying. It's, yeah. it's terrifying, but that's, and so, People ask, like earlier, Nima Toad asked me, what would be my economic system? And it's like, that's not for me to decide. Not solely. If you understand anarchism, if you really take it on board, mm -hmm. if me and 99 people walk into a building and start designing a society, it's not me who gets to say. I get to voice. I get to argue. I get to use my rhetoric and my tools at my disposal to express myself to the fullest of my capacity in an attempt to influence as best I can. But ultimately, it's a consensus decision that must be reached. And so prescriptive mannerisms... Uh, declarative statements, these sorts of things are the mm -hmm. enemy of the anarchist organizer because ultimately I haven't met the person that I'll be digging the soil up with yet, right? I have mm -hmm. to figure out what works for that person and what works for us. And that's really difficult to grasp for humans uh, because we, we project, we plan that's just automatically how our brain works for a lot of people is that it's like, okay, well, but what if happens? What, what if this, what if that? It's like, you can do that. And trust me, I'm one of those people at my core. I am the catastrophizing. What if guy 
right? I'm there trying to figure out all of the eventualities, but that won't survive the first interaction. It never does. So it's up to us as anarchists to each one, teach one, address mm -hmm. their needs, organize, build a community, grow that community, and ensure its survival and thrival. Because if you and, say, six of your neighbors get some shit going, doesn't matter what it is, some good shit, right? It helps you weather the storm. Basic Darwinian natural selection type thought processes on this. If it helps you guys weather the storm, whatever that storm may be, the people around you are going to want to know about it. Yeah. And then you offer it to them. Unlike the capitalists, unlike the communistic vanguards, you offer it mm. to them freely. You give unto them. You say, this is how. These are all the steps we took. This is how we do what we do, and we would be happy to work with you. Now you just doubled your size, tripled your size. You address down-ticket voting items. I know anarchists, and this is a point I've made over and over and over again. I know Emma's position, and Emma Goldman, just so vague, but I always refer to as a first name. I've, I've, I've read and heard it's so much. It's just, just she's just Emma at this point in my head. Um, mm -hmm. I know she would. She and I would argue like cats and dogs over this point. She was of the position that any engagement with the state is a validation, a validation of the state and therefore a corruption of your anarchistic principles. But I maintain that if I brought Emma to 2024, <laughs> she might, might revise that statement because it's a different battlefield today. So I advocate for things. Look, federal voting, dude, you're fucked at like the, all of the higher up ticket voting um, levels. But you get down to that low level, lo uh, bottom ticket, low, uh, low ticket levels where you're like city council, mayor, sheriff. Look. If you set up an encampment, if you set up a community center, if you set up a garden, if you set up a free library, if you set up a free clinic, it's going to be your city council members. It's going to be your fucking mayor. It's going to be your sheriff who are the ones getting in your way, who are criminalizing your activities, who are making your work as an organizer and activist more difficult. So engage. Mm -hmm. Fix that shit. You can't dissolve it yet. We're not there yet. But you know what you can do? Make sure that at least somebody holds that position who doesn't hate what you're doing, right? So you can at least go about your job as an anarchist organizer and activist and feed those who need fed. There's, these are the steps. Yeah. Like where I'm at, because um, like we have, like in my community, we have a thriving uh, like um, we don't have food not bombs, but we have a thriving food bank uh, where people are, you know, willing to go like a, like great lengths to ensure that people are fed. The one thing that I noticed that or the organization won't do, for obvious reasons, is to secure the food at cheap or no cost in mass. Um, and so I I kind of take some of those actions be like hey you know it really is this easy you know the food should just be in your stomach like do you do you donate uh, the food to them oh a thousand percent yeah okay so that that is that is exactly what i would expect from an anarchist is that you are, are they they have to exist as an organization within the status structure they can't risk that they can't if they're going to continue to exist, they have to, just like when I declared on Twitch for terms of service, if this is going to continue to exist so I can reach people, then I have to toe certain lines. But then but like, they don't need to ask like, questions. So the reason, the reason that I, I put it that way is because, again, I think a diversity of tactics is ideal. So the food bank, you know, yep. it goes through the proper channels in the market, blah, yep. blah, 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 blah. Like, when I take this food to reappropriate it, I don't just give it to the food bank. I give it to the homeless people and, and you know, okay. I give it to 
know, the people who I see that are struggling with the bills. And I say, hey, you know, I've taken on a risk to, take, to get this food to you, but I think it's, I think you're worth it. And then, um, and that's, that's one of the, that's probably one of the other reasons why I see more people a bit more eager to um, get, get those deals at the store. Um, that's, and that's, because, and that's like, perfectly fine. Like, the, like I, I think that we need to be taking these kinds of radical actions. Like, I don't even have an affinity group. Like, I'm just doing this with no fallback. Well, that's, like, and that's, again, that. that's a stratagem. And that's the point of a distributed network. Mm, is, of course. So, like, but all of them need to exist. Because the reason that I, I, Trumbleplex... Mm -hmm which is an anarchistic commune outside of Detroit, Michigan, that has existed for, I think, 30 years, right? They have residential housing. They have a library. They have their own internet. They have an artist space. They grow their own food, right? They've been successfully interfacing with capitalists as Detroit crumbled around them, basically, right? They mm. continued to thrive because they found that line. And you better believe that some motherfuckers that reside in Trumbleplex were doing some, let's say, gray market activities, right, for the purposes of. But as long as you find that cheeky method of interacting with the system, then you can continue to play their game and continue to exist and do these things. So we need this multitude of actions. We need somebody in my, my fear. We need my, my fear is like when we look at the USSR, when we look at Black Lives Matter, when we look at Fred Hampton, you know, it, it, the organizations didn't fall apart from within. They had outside. They had you know outside influences. You know, like uh, like who was the man? There was that man that got out on some charges for, with Fred Hampton. It's a great example. He you know, snitched on, on Fred Hampton, gave him, you know, drugs to put, like, to put him in a fucking coma so that they could waltz in the room and do what they did. I, like, that's why, and I believe that if we, again, like, you, like, you're, like you're saying, if we just had a distributed network, um, that that shit wouldn't happen. And, you know, the reason that the Black Panther, because after, after Fred Hampton died, Black Panthers, you know, they kept going for a little while, but were effectively neutered because they had a leader. And I genuinely think that, you know, with the Black Lives Matter protests, even like you're, you, you know, they're happening and you know that they're just as big as they were when fucking, you know, um, well, for, you know, not like for a long time, they've just, they've always been massive, you know, like down the street. Or am I wrong? Oh, you're yes. Looking... Yes. Of course you're wrong. Like the Black Lives Matter protests are nowhere near an activity level that they were. Um, at the height of, say, the Minneapolis riot? No, not even close. I mean, who's who's burning police stations? That shit would be national news. I mean, international news. Who's burning police stations? It wasn't even national news when it was happening. Oh, yes, it was. That's revisionism of the highest order. Are you kidding me? That shit was on the BBC. What? Yes. Okay. okay. I was well, broadcasting I'm, I'm live on the air for I, it. I should I should have said international. Like, yeah. Although a lot of your media is mine. Like Okay, okay. Yeah, oh yeah. It uh Raphael, it was nightly news here in Australia. Like that was very much. Um mm. Yeah, Nixa, it was all over the news. Che Fox was running it for weeks and Che's in in Brit Bonger land. Um yeah, and I was in stream for it too. Um, like, yeah, America burning was the headline. It, at Bobby, it was everywhere. Yeah, that's Ag Fencer, Bobby. Um, but that's, again, it, people, this is why I, the left has this obsession with a meta narrative that does not exist. And I blame the French Revolution for this. Um, I'm, I'm not a fan of the Jacobins Club, that's for sure. It, it has nothing to do with the various ideologies, methodologies, or groups. It's about the stories told. Why I call it a meta-narrative. 
it's it's the form the stories to, uh, took that we tell about those events. And they get compressed down into time frames that people have expectations for. It's like, when did World War II start? Mm, um, arguably, that's a, arguably, it started before World War I, right? Given the confluence uh, of events that give rise to the confluence oh, of events okay. that... This is my point about human beings not being a binary creature, but mm -hmm, I see we have this expectation. <laughs> Invasion of Manchuria, First Sino-Japanese War, like this, 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 there's, there's no one single variable at play here. And an attempt to reduce it down to that is reductionism of the highest order, right? This is, this is where, okay. you know, it, it there isn't the intersectionality is uh, we, we have meta intersectionality and the uh, the uh, the oppression uh, the oppression hypercube and it's it, either way we have lots of terms for some of these concepts on this channel but the the end of the day is no one person is really a, a static set of variables everything is in flux constantly right and when you consider that in a network fashion. A group of this, right? It's extraordinarily complex. It's so complicated to just start looking at this and analyzing it. And that's why most of our techniques are reductive in nature. They're exclusionary in nature because mm. we can't we can't be weighing all of those details. Are you kidding me? It has to be that he just you know uh, was black, right? Well, just but yeah. Definitely, it was because of that, right? It, it, it had to be because he was a coal miner. That's it, right? It, we, have, we engage in this because we can't possibly comprehend or fathom how complicated and detailed and multidimensional these processes are. And they exist on this ever-fluctuating spectrum of events that are occurring at the micro, microcosmic, the individual level, and the macrocosmic, the group level. And there's these ebbs and flows. There's these flare-ups, such as Occupy, such as, uh, such as George Floyd and BLM, right? There's these moments where consciousness flares up and people are activated and they do things and certain things change, certain tones change, society learns things, but then they die down and it goes back to some semblance of what it was before, but now it has different tonalities to it. Now it has different shades and colors that have been laid into that fabric. And when you attempt to look at it in that compressed fashion you lose a lot of what occurred and you lose the time it took to make that happen yeah, that's true as a gay man okay, okay who lived in the reagan era right as a gay man who mm. lived through the wishing of the death of my people right openly in yeah. the media right who lived yeah. through the aids crisis who lived through the renaissance of being gay and now gets to live through the trans panic right i see this ebb and flow in a lot of ways just that mirrors my anarchistic vision as it were it's like there is no one battle that can win this war this is a war we will fight for a very, very, very long time until the very nature of human itself shifts on some basic level. Because there isn't a person who's born a fascist, right? But every single one of us has the makings of a fascist. We're all saints, we're all devils. And to deny that, to deny that core humanity is the makings of letting that problem foment and letting it grow in the shadows. And so that sort of like multidimensional spectrum-based holistic approach is how I try and approach my anarchism is because there is no one answer. The revolution 
isn't going to be a single event. The revolution will look different for every single person involved in it. And it will look different from day to day, year to year, lifetime to lifetime, because a revolution isn't a single moment in time. It's a protracted series of events that we as limited beings attempt to describe using our limited words. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. That, that was very, I don't know, like that was, I, I, I enjoy that phrasing, but you're right, you're right. You know, um, revolution is a spectrum, you know, we're on it and we're not at the same time. It depends on who who is doing the observation you're you're out there you're uh, out there uh <clears throat> appropriating um goods for those in need right you're a, you're doing a whole other thing than somebody else but that other thing that that other person is doing is no more or less valuable to the overall you ask the person you just fed whether they give a shit about that guy over there doing that thing They'll be like, no, no, that, that's my person right there. That's fucking, I, I'm ride or die with that one. But you ask somebody else who's being helped by that other person, and they're going to identify the other way. It's all about perspective, uh, I guess subjective perspective as humans. My, my sticking point, I guess, um, is just that, like, you know, like, I don't care what kind of action people are taking, like, against the state, as long as they're taking action. You know, if you think a nice big checklist of people's names saying we don't like this is, is, your, is your way of going about it, then that's fine. Or if you're going to be be doing the things I'm doing, which maybe you don't need as much of, um, or maybe we need more of, I don't know. I, um, I just want to see more radical thought. I have maintained my entire, let's call it a career as an anarchist at this point, that the job of an anarchist is... 50% education, 49% direct action, and 1% take a day off and go fucking vote for Christ's sake. Because again, your mayor is the one who's going to fucking crack down on you. So go just handle that shit, please. Take a day off as an anarchist and just go do the statist thing and vote for fuck's sake. Because if your local city council doesn't hate what you're doing, then you can do it better. So just pure pragmatism at that point, but it's 50% education, 49% direct action and 1% go do the stupid state thing that might make your life a little bit easier as an anarchist. It's worth doing. Like see, the thing is, is like, I've, I've repeatedly been told that I should run for fucking office. It just, just the thought sickens me. But what, like, what office, what can you do from that office? Is it possible? See, this is, this is, this is, this is, a, a, leftists need to embrace a greater degree of Machiavellian action. Th they need to take a lesson from the right to a certain extent. And trust me, I understand the, fr I understand the phrase that, the, you know, it's not you who will change the system. It's the system who will, ch that will change you. Trust me. I take that on board fully, but at the local level, you can do some damage. Like if you were like down here, we have sheriffs, right? If you were elected sheriff, are you kidding me? The damage you could do from inside that oh, position. What? Just saying. Fucking sheriff. Yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Like, like straight up class trader. Like as class traders, you can be sheriff. Have you never heard of a double agent? Sure, sure, sure. Like, you know, um, do you, fifth column and all that. Yeah. You could boost grift, motherfucker. Grift. Like, you're okay. Oh. You're okay stealing. You're not okay lying. No, I'm okay lying. It's just like, well, the ways in which I engage, the ways in which I engage, or the ways I w in which I believe I should engage specifically, and I, I maybe as well as do, uh, with the systems are like, I don't think I could be, I mean, maybe I could be a town counselor, like, okay. couldn't join the fucking force. Well, but that, again, what it's degrees of difference between those two things. You're still working for the state, but you, <laughs> you can see in your well, mind's eye how you can do damage there. You're like, okay, yeah, as a city counselor, 
I could, you know, I could sway some of those votes. I could get in there. Maybe I could get a friend on the city council, right? We could team up. Yeah, we, could like, do, do, we could do some I'm policy gonna changes. I'm going to say something radical. My, my type of engagement with bureaucracy um, uh, is... Um, well, it breaks TOS. I'll just say it breaks TOS. I can't say anything. All right. Well, but again, the point is that you're artificially restricting your methodology. And it reminds me of a turn of phrase that I happened to live through was Michelle Obama saying, when they go low, we go high. Yeah. How'd that work Yuck. out for you? You dumb cunt. Fucking hell. Yeah, yeah, it worked well, didn't it? It worked well. The right-wing takeover of our court system and our government uh, absolutely didn't happen as you went high, did uh, it? We, good job. We, they, the, uh, yeah, good the, job. You the Republicans did not dodge voting until you, it was the, their presidency. You fucking white moderate. <laughs> that's, that's literally MLK territory. Come on. That's a letter from a Birmingham jail. It's the white moderates we have to worry about. It fuck's sake. <laughs> Pay attention. <sighs> Come on! It's, it's extra gross that they're not—they're not always white anymore. Like my black community, you know, um, we have a phrase: "Not all skin folk are kin folk." Wouldn't recommend using it if you're not black. Yeah, um, but like, hey, um, hey, hey! Why can't I use it against my own people? <laughs> I got, I got color of skin too. I got uh -oh. some, of, some of these uh -oh. motherfuckers uh -oh. ain't my people. <laughs> I'm just oh, saying. Gonna be, as soon as you say it, as soon as you say that line, they're looking straight at your eyeball <laughs> to see the color of them. <laughs> fucking hazel. Um, fucking uh, yeah, yeah wrong color. Again, oof, wrong. That's too. But God, there's just as much racism in every fucking corner of this planet. I've found. Um, leftists should not act like liberals and be afraid to wield power, which the right does all the fucking time. Exactly. Exactly. Well, hold on, but I'm, uh, all I'm saying, all I'm saying is that the tools of the oppressor will not be used to free us. Like, we can't free ourselves with the but, tools but wait, of the oppressor. But wait, can they harm the oppressor? Um... In like small ways, sure, but like on it on, on an actual like meaningful scale, but, I would but never say so. But again, we've talked about this. The micro connects to the macro, and the macro the is, is comprised like, of the micro. So we're not saying run for president. What we're saying oppressor. is, can you undermine that system in your small locality using one of their own methodologies against them? And if you can then would that not be a useful tool? Like, for, from my perspective, um, in, like, in my lifetime, in my, my engagement, you know, um, engaging with my local constituents and all that bullshit is about as uh, disruptive as capitalism is to itself inherently. You know, like, capitalism is a self-destructive system. Um, and, you know, I, like, I can, sure, I can go on the council and I can, you know, do, like, you know, I follow Robert's Rules of Order and start doing votes and get things going this way and that way. But then, like, it gets overturned. Like, you know, it doesn't go through because the council doesn't want it or it, it goes call, through, but then... You call me a doomer and it. defeatist. No, no, no. I'm just, it, I'm just saying that operating within the system, operating outside the system, it. doesn't it? Does the nets the same results? It's a fight. That's not true at all. It's a fight. Oh come on. Okay. Is capitalism no, still no, no, here? No. Is liberalism still here? Yes. Right. Sure, like sure. Ill illegalism but, but, had okay, its like, had its heyday, and it, it produces some results, just like some things produce results. That's why a plethora of modalities need be applied. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not talking like, about every anarchist yeah. running for mayor. I'm talking about, hey, are you an anarchist who has a shot at being mayor? Because well, here, if I'll you give, do... I'll give you an example. So, in my community, we, um, we had, uh, an, like, an election maybe five or, five or six years ago. No, sorry, probably four. Um, and 
the black community was like, this is it. We're a hundred fucking percent getting black voices on that old white man council. And so we elected two black people. Uh, one was a, a black elder woman. Um, I don't mean, well, she, she was like older. She was in her 60s. Uh, um, elder is more of like a respect term. But anyways, and another was like a uh, 30 late 30s working black man and we like they're they were for the people you know they were they were like me you know saying this kind of shit and then they got on the council and started doing like the politics and they started trying to weed through the bureaucracy and understand robert's fucking rules and all that stuff and they're husks they're husks and i'm just like they weren't you cut, can't fucking complete. they weren't cut out for the job i i'm gonna be real with you i'm gonna be real with you it takes a very specific person. You don't per put the person who's got a disability and bleeds easily on the front line of the protest against the cops. That's the okay, reality okay. of the situation. There are right people for right jobs, right? I can't stand being dirty. Oh, well, let's not for try and force that person to like farm in the community garden. But I love teaching children. Hold on. <laughs> I've got I got something for you then, right? If those two people but, were not up yes. to the task, they weren't. They failed. Well, they, they failed. They specifically sought out the task. So, but know, they failed they, at it. I don't care that they sought it out. They failed. They failed doing the what, thing. So they weren't the what, right what people. They, the right person would have succeeded. Oh, like, like, well, what's going to make me different? Like, why am I? I don't know. Person? Are you different or not? Do you, are you made of oh. sterner stuff? I don't know that I would use that language um, in this context. Like cupcake rolling I, I, out I, from I each according to their abilities. Like the reality of the situation is that when Machno was fucking operating, he needed some motherfuckers who could pull a trigger, right? If you're going to throw up every single day that you pull that trigger and you're going to fucking have a full on breakdown every time, maybe we need you back running the newspaper presses, you know, maybe we need you fucking running a farm. Maybe we need you like the reality of the situation is some of these jobs that need doing are going to break a motherfucker. And maybe you won't find that out until you do the job. But that doesn't mean that the tactic can't be successful. It just means it wasn't successful in that attempt. Not every, not every person who goes in and lifts a bag of bread is going to be able to do it cleanly. A lot of motherfuckers go in there and lift that bag all day every day and walk out no problem. Somebody is going to end up behind bars. That person probably wasn't cut out for that job, were they? Right? Like, this is the reality of the situation is it's a roll of the dice. That's reality. That's just how existence works. And occasionally, you get a crafty, grifty motherfucker on your team who's like, oh, yeah, we've got some in here right now. Right now. I, I'm not going to call them out by name, but people in this chat exactly know who you are. If I'm mentioning you, we got people who are doing shit in the system that have tendrils and are fighting for workers and literally providing an umbrella of cover for the proletariat at very integrated into the statist in, in, infrastructure right now. In chat, in in positions that you you would find various degree varying degrees of distasteful to oh okay well but sort of territory, but it's doable. It's a doable thing, and the tactics shouldn't be eschewed just because one individual finds it distasteful or unpleasant. Because a lot of the stuff I that are necessary, as you said, we need to do some shit. And a lot of the stuff we need to do is distasteful to a lot of different people. One of those jobs might just be being mayor. Mm, okay, okay, wow. <laughs> wow, nice.
That was proper. Like, why can't an anarchist be an anarchist on the DL and do some damage? Right? I've been loud and proud my whole life, but some motherfuckers out there are allies, and they've been on the DL. <laughs> and they, they're in jobs. Right? We got, there's one person in this community who's been around for quite a while that is in a position that you would find horrific. Horrific. And that dude has done more good for more people than you and I will ever do in, in our entire cumulative lives because he's in that position of power. He's been able to manipulate systems of power in a way that you and I can only dream of. Dude's important. Dude's important. And he's important to capitalists. And so, like, we need those guys. You need them, right? You need those allies that are like, you know, I'm not going to be too loud about this, but, like, 100%, like, you're right, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but I need to do some shit. But, like, when that moment happens, when the other guy would have been in that chair making that decision, the eviction would have happened. But because our guy's in there, the eviction didn't happen, Right? That's the difference. Mm. I'll take that win okay, okay. all day, every day. And any moralizing that anybody wants to do over that, then go fuck themselves. I don't care. I'm going to take every W that I can get. I'm going to pile them on a fucking pile like a dragon horde of wins. And I'm going to roll around in them at night. Because there's not many dubs you that we get. And I'm going to enjoy every single last one of them. Right? I'll take the, I'll take the win. You basically convinced me. But like my only question would be, you know, if people are in these positions and they're making effective change, um, the people that they're making change for are, may not may may just be convinced that well the system does work. We just need we just need the right people in charge of the of the you know capitalism is fine as long as we put benevolent people in these positions. I can tell you for one, the specific example that uh, Marcus just realized he wasn't, <laughs> once you said important to capitalists, I knew who you meant it. It wasn't me. Rude. Um, Marcus is fully integrated in the system as well. Uh, shut up, lawyer. Um, I, can t I can affirm, because I know this person, um, I can affirm that in no way, shape, or form does he support the existence of this continued existence of the system as it stands? No, 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 no. It's not, about, it's not about whether they support it. Obviously, I understand you're saying they don't. Like the people who are watching what they're doing might be convinced. Hey, look, you know, um, the system, the system can work if only more people like that's, this are in are in power. That's our job, though. That's our job. That's not his job. It's not his job. That's that's my job. That's my job to to take that person aside and explain to them why this isn't an endorsement of the system right education 50 mm. percent of an anarchist job is education every single one of us that's half your fucking role in this world okay. is passing this knowledge on to somebody else and so that's on the rest of us you can't i'm not okay, okay. You know, I'm not going to fucking, I'm not out my man. I'm not, we got fucking spies and shit. Like you leave them, right? They're not a part of the conversation. Yeah. The only reason they're a part of the conversation is because you and I are having this conversation, right? Otherwise the allies are, get to be allies, right? It's just, we'll leave them be. But if anybody sees that, it's you, our job to contextualize that for them. Be like, yeah, that's not an endorsement of the system. That's that's us attacking this thing. It's us chipping away at the castle walls. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a ting, ting, ting at a time, but it has to be done. Somebody's got to get the spoon out and start grating it against the prison wall, right? Like, it's just the way it goes. All right, I'm convinced. I appreciate it. This has been very enlightening and fun. Oh, I'm glad. And I'm, you know, welcome in. Like I said, tonight's bad movie night. So after stream stops here in a little bit, um, we'll be watching uh, Leprechaun in the Hood um, on, on VC, on Discord. Um, you're welcome to join us. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, lovely to meet you. Happy to see somebody's out there doing some shit. It's always nice to hear. 
Um, I, I want to hear your thoughts on one thing, though. Hmm? Are you familiar with Bow of the Fifth Column? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know. I know Bow. Oh, you're aware of the uh, trafficking? Yep. 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 Oh, what, what the fuck do you make of Bo? Because if you, if you didn't know about the trafficking and you just looked at your channel, holy fuck. Oh, uh, well, I mean, you know. What, what, do, what are you asking me of him? Like, what, what do you want to... Like, do you think, do you think that he is useful... Um, ah yes, a, use, a useful idiot, a useful tool. Is, is is there a net positive from him? Right, uh, the sort of utilitarian yeah. Yeah. political calculus, as it were. Right. Um. Yes, and the ranch, dude. I was gonna bring up the ranch name, but Jesus Christ. Um. I don't know. To be perfectly honest. I don't know if um, if there's a net positive to be gained there. It depends on a very fucked up actuarial table that one would have to start consulting, I guess. Um, if you really want to do some like utilitarian calculus and start weighing that, because you're going to be weighing it against human suffering. Know that. Like, it's, you know, it's fucking, yeah. it's migrant labor being exploited sort of territory, right? Um, so you will be on one side of the scales when we weigh his heart, right? It, on one side of the scales, we will be weighing exploitation of migrant labor and some pretty fucked up references mm -hmm. as far as naming schemes go, right? Um, yeah. And on the other side... You have the engagement and possible sliding of people and a, an adjustment of Overton windows, right? Now, what we'd have to know to really, to really say something definitively on this matter is the net positive from the people he's reached. We'd have to know about his audience. We'd have to know... Did changing these people's minds in any significant number have any significant impact in the world around them? Because this person, Bo, was somewhat directly involved in exploiting, right? And then mm -hmm. this person saved a person from exploitation, okay? For doing some very cold, very ruthless utilitarian calculus here. Then those nullify each other for this math. And we'd have to know now if we're not engaging in a form of utilitarian calculus and we're just weighing this from an instinctual position, from an emotive, from an empathetic positionality, then ultimately you're a douchebag and like you could have done what you do and not exploit migrant labor at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> like you you could have accomplished both of these things simultaneously you know that yeah. right like it's it's possible to do that without that but then are you a leftist are you really a leftist See, is there not my, restorative my... and re rehabilitative justice is there no way to earn your way back from committing the sin okay so this this is where it gets very easy to discuss because you know, we hear lots of people talking about Palestine um, and about the Palestinians um, who are only doing so because they're that anti-Semitic. And then we have, you know, people who are possibly engaging in radical thought and expression, but only to um, later on, you know, uh, abuse, abuse our, uh, the, tr the gained trust. Bookchin. Oh, I think it's. I think it's. Sorry, I have grudges. Oh, okay, no worries. Um, so I think it's very easy to say we should cut these people off because just like you know the Candace Owens um, saying, "Oh, you know, I I care for the Palestinian people." What they really mean? Now is she's in a fight with. Ben I don't like Beepo. Yep. Uh, um, 
I don't like you know Jew, Jewish people. Um, I think that that's what that's what Bo is like. That's my suspicion, and I don't think that we should take the risk. Um, but like, I, that's my issue. I, the reason the reason I, I bring, the, bring this up isn't isn't even really about Bo. It's about how people can engage in radical action. I mean, you you, you listen to um you know um Arthur, so you know about the song you know uh, love me I'm a liberal like these people come to the rallies they do the things you know they engage but like you know they're they're really really ops so hear you um I don't think there's an effective way to cut him off. I think that that's posturing at best. Um, okay. There's no like, there's no deplatforming him. There's no like, who, who, who what, what vanguard committee are you going to appeal to to remove him from the party? Right? Like, there's, there's no way to do. No, that. no, I don't even mean like. Well, but, but like, so I think, I think that like you know, for. You know, obviously, we can't stop him from saying the words he's saying. We we can uh, more collectively say, "Hey, you know, just because this person's saying fun mm -hmm. words that se seem to make sense doesn't mean that they're actually on your side. They're just using this rhetoric in order to, you know, pipeline you down this direction." Like with Bo, um, the problem is. Isn't that they did all that awful stuff? I mean, that's obviously a problem. It's that every time that it's ever mentioned or, you know, they're asked about it, they dodge and lie and say that they were helping migrant workers across the border. And so they were, you know, their charges, char they're being charged for helping migrant workers get across the border illegally. You know, that's the problem. And like, if you ask people who say free Palestine, oh, hey, um, what do you think about you know, the Jewish community in America, they start, you know, turning their heads, you know, wondering, you know, if, like, the, like, that's the problem. I see, a, I see a conflation of two issues here, which um, I would like to separate. I would like to separate both. Okay, I, see, I see, I see the, the, the thread connecting them. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying these are two separate issues. What are you doing? I'm just to deal with these. I think these are two separate things to deal with in two separate ways. Um, and so I would like to, to pull them apart a little bit. Um, like a goody, goody breadstick or something. Um, either way. Um, Bo, I think, I don't think I care too much about Bo. Yeah. I, I, I think it, it, the way I want to phrase that is that. Um, I, I, is he presently still trafficking people? I don't think so. Um, so ultimately the harm he would be doing is potentially some like lib invasion like lib invest like invasion territory like fine it's just shit we always it would be it would be his namesake you know he, he, you know uh, the fifth column like <sighs> hey i'm one of the guys you know i'm a socialist except, except he's he's, he's, he's the fucking fifth column he's not and everybody like you can look at chat as soon as he came up everybody everybody knows the deal like everybody's like anybody who's politically educated online at this point, like if you mention his name, everybody's like, oh, you mean the human trafficker, the dude with the fucked up ranch, the dude who's got like, like everybody knows. So okay, I think, okay, okay. I, I think he's just like, you know, yeah, on, yeah on like, important. Cat, Cat said he ultimately uh, he cut off. And we're always going to have to contend with them. And then we're always going to have to watch for ops. That's just the deal. Right. Like every every anarchist knows, like if you can't speak the lingo, then, you know, we're going to be suspicious anyway. Um, so that just is what it is. Right. Like, I mean, look at the FBI profile on anarchists in America and it did most uh, incredibly difficult groups to infiltrate due to the, the knowledge required to infiltrate them. Right. It's it's it is what it is. Right. It is like I've never seen I've never even seen their stuff and Che knows about it. 
Um, um, but yeah, fair enough. Yeah, it is. Okay, it, so then what? It, it, now the Palestine so Bo, thing Bo is effectively irrelevant. Yeah, he's eh, whatever. The Palestine thing is oh. this is the same yeah. problem that you have with every single movement. It, it, it's not unique. It's not new. Um, in really any way, shape, or form that I can think of. Um, it's probably not even new in this regard. Um, but every movement has the possibility of like, I'm going to be, I'm going to be a little reductive here, but the possibility of two infiltrators, you've got the well-meaning, but don't know what the fuck you're doing infiltrator, Right. You like okay? You're probably harmful to us. You th you like you're saying the right stuff, and you're here because you know the feels and stuff like that. But you don't know the things you need to know, and you don't know the the behind of why. And ultimately, you will be bad for us, right? And then you've got the infiltrator who's there for the malicious reason. Right, And they take different forms depending on the movement. And so for the Palestinian movement, what you have is a distinct, you know, you have white nationalists, white Christian nationalists, anti-Semitic sort of neo-Nazi groups that are like, yeah, fuck them Jews, right? Um, fucking, they're down instantly. They're like, yeah, free Palestine, right? Um, yeah, yeah. My stepfather lies on the other side of that category. When this kicked off... He immediately came to the defense of Israel because fuck them Muslims. Right? Oof, 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 oof. So yeah. there's two sides to this, no matter how you look at it. And every movement all bad. has this problem. Mm -hmm. You're going to have capitalist, uh, uh, capitalist invasion within the Occupy movement. You've got the capitalist pressures. You've got the well-meaning white moderate who shows up at the BLM rally, the, even though expressly dictated by MLK, you're the problem. Right? Yeah. Like, you have this no matter what. You're going to have these problems. And it's just the job of the organizer to make sure that their people – are educated again it comes back education is the panacea for a lot of shit it really is um it's up to the organizer to make sure that their people are educated and that they can isolate and separate those people out as they are identified within any action and make sure that there is a divisionary line placed both ret rhetorically and possibly physically between those actors and the movement itself. So, again, it's battles that you have to fight in an, a war that we cannot win. No one wins it. It's just a series of battles over and over and over again. <laughs> That's it. That's our job. Yeah. Um, love him or hate him. Okay, okay. John Stewart's f w closing words on his first show back were some of the most inspirational shit I've heard on mainstream media. And he's like, you know, I've been grossly wrong at the worst of times and dismissive at the best, but it is a lunch pale fucking job day in and day out. You don't, I'm not telling you, you don't have to worry if your guy doesn't get in on the magic day. I'm telling you, you have to worry every day before that and every day after that. Because that's what it looks like. That's the reality of the situation. Anybody who thinks that there's going to be a magic moment, they're fucking asleep at the wheel. So fight the fight, yeah, um, fight, fight the fights that you can fight where you can fight them. And, you know, it is what it is, what you do. You're doing the right stuff. Just, you know, don't get lost in the macro because, well, it's too big. I'm definitely more of a forest than a trees person, but I hear what you're saying. You plant one tree at a time. Yep. Points. Well, yeah, I really appreciate this. <laughs> Kaiser, all we can do is ride the tiger, one might say. 
<laughs> oh, you strap in, you take the ride. It's a hell of a ride. It's been it's been a great conversation. Like I said, welcome to the community and feel free to stay for bad movie night. Yeah, I, have, I definitely will. All right. Well, see you around, Mage. Thank you.